Uh, to work on these lifters. So we got a five to choose from here. We got to come up with four that we're going to use. So let's go measure these and see which ones look the best. Whichever measures the best is the one we're going to use. Okay, it's got a lot of wear on this end. Two and a half, that's pretty low. I don't like that one. This one's only three and three quarter, I like that. Three and three quarter, so that's a good one. Well, that number's what's on the mic, not the size, obviously. Three and five eighths. And this one's four. Three and a half right there. That'll work. Four. Three. That's small. Four. Four and a half. Alright, so we got this one's a half style better than this one over here. So these ones I think came out of the bike, right? it? No, that's a rusty one. Probably one of mine. This one was the worst. So that kicks up to four real quick. This one's a little bit tighter on the top and a little bit worse on the bottom than the other one. But it's close. Look inside the roller fork here, make sure it's not chewed up too bad. I think I'll go with this one. Okay, this one has a little rust on the surface. It's one we're not using. Okay, so the decision has been made. There's a new roller kit, some crane. No longer available except through me. So, these are the good ones, supposedly. Yes, these are the good ones. So I don't think you can read it on there, but it says Brevia on it. Can't get through the light or not, but anyway, it's BRV uh, I something. Why? Who knows? Anyway, that's the best one. They're made in Japan. Anyway, these are the best rollers made. They're hard to come by anymore, but these are the best ones. There's still some out there floating around. Several manufacturers sold them. Those are the good ones. The ones that have nothing on the side are junk. Those would be from V-Twin. Those are junk. Okay, so these have to be pressed in. These have to be pressed out. So we got to cut these out to put these new ones in. So that's what we're going to go work on. And we gotta polish these up a little bit too. Alright, so I'm gonna go over here in the drill press and do some drilling. Ah, so it's junk in my eye over here. Pretty empty. I got room now. Deal. All right.
The big drills ain't too bad. Not too good either. Yeah, like one of these. Crappy and usable. New vise. Resembles something like a vise. I'm going to take I'm going to drill out the top of the head of the rivet here. So you can pick whichever side you want to go through. This one looks more centered, so we'll use that one. And you drill it down until the rivet head is just gone. And you just touch the body or about to touch the body. That's as close you want to be. So you just put this in a vise here, hold it flat. the rivet head there. Not quite all the way yet. A couple more pushes. You don't want to push into the fork body too much. So you go down until it's just about gone or gone. This one is not quite gone, but it's pretty damn close to it. So probably going back in with one more shot. until I just see it right there on the edge where it just caught it. So that's as far as you want to go. No more. So pick the next one. See how this one's a little bit off center. This one looks pretty centered. Let me use this side.
Okay, they're drilled. Now I can go remove them. So that we do down here. Nice, strong, thick ass steel table. Okay. I need some other tools though. We need a hammer and a punch. Where's my punch? Punch. Custom made. Hammer. Oh yeah, I need one other part I forgot. Socket. Something looks like it's been abused. Like this one. Okay, so basically what happens is you have an inch and a half thick steel table, so don't move when you hit it. This socket here goes around this here, <clears throat> so it sits on a flat part, so that rivet can go into the socket, and you beat it down into it. This punch has been tapered here, and it goes straight, which is the size of the pin. And it has a stop right here. It can only go until it hits that. So this is the size of the pen. Taper allows you to go in. Pull. So there you go. That's how it's made. And that's how you do it. So anyway, now you can see what we're going to do. Basically going to beat the piss out of it. Pretty solid hit. First hit, it didn't really move. Do it again. That's pretty damn solid. Doesn't appear to want to come out. Pretty solid. You got pretty good hits there. Doesn't appear to be moving very much. My hammer back. That one don't want to come out. Let's try a different one. Oops. Yeah, one hit it came out. So the pin comes out. Goes right down the side of the socket. See? Okay, that one's done. And you pull these out, they just fall out. You can see all the rollers and stuff in there. So we're throwing this one away. Next one. Another hard one. Get lots of practice picking stuff up around here. This one's starting to move in there now. See how it's pulling through? Starting to come out the other side. See my tool goes down until it touches it here. See how it does it? That one's done. Let me go back to the settlement. doesn't want to move. This one's starting to move a little bit. Or 
there it goes. Come on. That'll come out. Just gotta make sure the forks inside the forks aren't worn too bad. Be a bad thing if they are. So there's a rivet to come out. Or pin, whatever you want to call it. It's actually a rivet. These all look pretty good. Now if you have more pins, you can put these rollers in something else if you wanted to. I don't usually bother doing that. So this is now trash. So they get trashed. Okay, so now these are ready to be... I'm going to hone these a little bit. So I'm going to take these apart. So I can hone them. So this one here is tight. Which one was tight? This one was tight. Got to loosen this up so I can hold it. Actually, that one, that one actually probably works. Okay, we don't need these tools here anymore. <clears throat> Alright, so now we go over here. Make sure you put your tools away when you're done with them. You don't lose them. Otherwise you lose them. See if you always put the thing back where you, where it comes where it goes, you'll never lose it. That one always sits right in that corner right there. Just like this hammer here is always in my bucket. It's over there. Okay, I go over here. Get a little honing. So we gotta find a hone for this. That'd be right down over there somewhere. Right about right here where it belongs. Okay, this one here we have to open up the hole quite a bit to hone. See the hone's not quite big enough. We get a different one. A bigger one. Okay. There you go. That one fits. This must be the one we use. Okay, so we get our hone. Wipe up the oil. Okay, I'm go back over here to lay. <clears throat> so we can do some honing. Alright. Okay. Hone the ex external blocks here. Knock off any high spots, unevenness. Close enough to be around. spots are nice and smooth, but the low spots are still low. So I can't do anything about low. I can only fix high. So at least now they're nice and smooth. The birds on them are gone. So here's the difference between one that's been honed and one that hasn't been honed.
nice and smooth now, see? Still got all these low spots, but the high spots are nice and smooth now. Alright, so let's do each one of these. It'd be nice if these are a lot more flat, a lot more straight, but oh well. These don't last very long. Not even we are how much we're balancing. Can't do anything about low spots. Just make sure there's no high spots. Back in the old days, we used to use emery paper on there. Bad Fox, you follow the low spots a little bit. This is more accurate. trays are going to get. So now I got to put new rollers in them. All right, we'll be back for that one. Okay, got these all cleaned up. Nice and smooth. I'm going to put the new rollers in here. And I'm going to rivet them, in, rivet them down. So you don't lose any of the rollers in there. So the best way to keep them losing the rollers is to keep them vertical like that. And they all stay inside like they're supposed to. If you flip them upside like that, they want to fall out. Okay, these go inside of here. You line up the hole right there and you stuff the pin through it. There you go. Now you gotta rivet it down. Sometimes the pins are tight, other times they're loose. This brand they're usually loose. There you go. Just gonna move around a little bit until they go in. There they go. Stick the pin through it. Now the center bushing is a little bit taller than the everything else, so when you rivet against it, everything else will still rotate. Unless there's big burrs on your forks, rollers, and they won't. See, this one doesn't want to go in. Beat on a little bit. That one's tight, see? Nice. So you want to get it where it's centered equally on both sides, just a little bit sticking up equally. Mm. Yep, too much. Looks pretty equal from side to side. Okay, now I'm going to stick it over here on the press and squash it. You could use a rivet gun too, I guess. So you can see how my block's well worn. So you set up on top of here. You got to make sure you're on the flat spot and not on the round spot here, otherwise you'll destroy your lifter. And then we just we go up under here and just push on the edge of that. And once again, you got to make sure that is on the side over here where it doesn't get done. If you do it like this, the lifter won't work. So we do it right over here like that. So I got to move this over until it lines up correctly. Otherwise, we'll have a problem. So you can 
do this with a hammer, you can punch, you can do it with a rivet gun. It doesn't really matter how you do it. You just have to crush it in. And then flip it over 180. Do it again. It's about three or four tons of pressure. So you make sure it's fairly flat on there. And it rotates. Pretty good. So it looks like it's still a little bit above the surface for some reason. Because there's a low spot on my block somewhere. So we just move it to a better spot and do it again. <laughs> A little bit flatter that time. Okay, those are in there now. It's riveted in. Good to go. Brand new. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. Now these ones go up and down, so when you hold it, you have to hold it in the right spot now. A little more difficult. So you go down until you hit. And you go up and down a little bit, and you pick in kind of in the middle. Five tons of pressure, and it's flattened in on both sides. Make sure the roller still rotates freely, no binding. Boom, done. Flat. Rotates good. Last one. I want a little bit of an angle. Not sure why. Okay, yeah. tastes good. Make sure they all feel good. If they feel like they're sticking up a little, a little bit on the edge, come back and redo them again. This one feels like it's a little high on this corner. Let's try it again here. Still feels high. Just doesn't want to go down on that surface. <laughs> All right, screw it. So it feels a little high on that corner too. That block's real too flat. That feels better. All right, they're in there. So these are all good to go. They're like new again. Except they're half worn out. Maybe kind of like new, but they're not new. All right, so now we go back over here. And we pick what we're going to do over here. So we get to decide which blocks we're going to use, and which lifters we're going to use, and where the lifters are going to go. The intake lifters, I want to be the best ones, so you figure out which ones are the best ones. Four under. Big hole. Bad one. Three and a half. Four. So those are good. These are crap. 
Okay, so these are going to be our exhaust. Exhaust going the outside corners, and the going the inside corner. See how easy that is? Take one of the big ones, pick your blocks, which ones we're going to use. So stick them in there and feel them. You can also look right in here and see the clearance going back and forth. See which ones you like the best. See how that one's fairly loose? You can hear it too. So that one's loose. That'll be an exhaust. A little tighter. This was our tightest one. Yeah, about the same. Try this one. About the same. They're all about the same. This is the original one. That one's definitely a little tighter. So I'm going to put his two on the intakes. So I got to pick out one of the three over here. So now you just look down inside the holes and see physically which one looks the best of, of this group. They all look pretty even. These look very even. You get about the same amount of honing on all of them. Yeah, about the same. All right, there are those. All right, so I got them all laid out. I'm gonna put them on the bench or in the motor. These are my two best ones. These are the worst ones. So you want the exhaust to be a little bit worse because we want more intake timing than exhaust timing. I want more horsepower. I have an option. I want more. Okay, so these are good to go on that. So we need two O rings. These already have new O rings on them. These are the two O rings we took off. They were supposed to be new, he said. So we're going to go with them being new. You roll them on down. Take your thumbnail and run them around, both sides of the O-ring. That'll take any twisting out of the O-ring. An O-ring has a twist in it, like that. It'll leak. Looks good. All right, so now we need some bolts. I'm sure some chrome allen bolts here we're going to use. I guess there's at least three of these. And the other one is going to be this one with a stud on it for the air cleaner support. That's easy goes in this hole right here. Front intake. Okay, now let's take this stuff and lube it. Fat fingers getting to be too fat to fit in these lifter blocks anymore. Ah, sharp. Over the years, these things get bigger, fatter, because they get crushed. Years and years of beating on them makes them small, makes them bigger. I could use my small finger, but what do I want to do that for? Sharp edges in here, so you have to be careful about twisting. Okay, get a good layer of red goop in there. Okay, now you take this lifter here. Lubricate it. Now we already got grease in the roller, so we don't have to worry about lubricating those. Stick it in here like this, spin it around a couple times. Make sure it goes up in there nicely. Put a little oil on the O-ring so it slips in easier. Slip it in the case. There you go. 
Right, if you can just push straight down, if that don't work, give a little twist, it'll drop in easily. If it doesn't, then you can take a big socket, put it on top, and push it right on the center. Do not hit on the side of the block, it'll break the ears right off. These ears are not made to be hit on. So you hit a socket right in the center and beat on that. It spreads the load and goes straight down to do any damage. Unless you're doing something really stupid. So, like forgetting to put oil on the O-ring. Something else not being videotaped, I can see. Almost forgot again. Okay. That goes down. I got to clean the goop off my hands. Clean the table off too while we're at it. Okay. So this one here is for your cleaner. So it goes right here. These just no kind of locking device on these. You just tighten against a aluminum block directly. No washer, no nothing. See how they do it. Here's your Allen's. Just move them back and forth until the screw goes in. So the center of the block, it's loose in the hole, just go back and forth and put it right in the center. You can usually get it pretty close, like that. Interruptions, they're getting done around here. Hello! Do you know what time it is? Time to come over and harass me. That's what time it is. Okay. Yeah, I know that feeling. Those are nice and tight. Good, shut up for a minute. Okay, those are nice and tight. Now you want to make sure the lifters go up and down nice and smoothly. Not binding up in the block. Good to go. And then you rotate your motor and make sure they go up and down without hitting anything. And it should fall down with gravity. Like that. Bluke, you're a bluker. All right, I got to harass some guy on the phone now. That's it.